Hi. So in today's lesson, we're going to be reviewing Android Fundamentals 3.3 Support Libraries. Support Libraries additional libraries that add functionality beyond the Android SDK that allow you to do things like backwards compatibility, where you can build your app and target older Android operating systems, and the app will look and behave similar as if you were running on a newer device. It also adds additional form factors, like for TV or wearables, and it provides additional UI and some other design features in addition to the Android SDK. So the first thing we want to do is go and check that we have the support libraries included. Go to Tools and choose SDK Manager. From here, we want to look at SDK Tools, and down here at the bottom where it says Support Repository, make sure that this says Installed for all of these. And if you haven't already, go ahead and check that and run through the install. Go ahead and click OK. Now let's create a new project. And we're going to choose an empty activity and choose Next. Uh, we're going to call this Hello Compat. And this may look a little different. I'm running the latest version of Android Studio, which is 3.4. Um, they've changed out this wizard a little bit. When you select the minimum API, note we are saying API 15, so this will run all the way back to Ice Cream Sandwich, which has been out for quite a while. And according to this, it says your app will run on approximately 100% of devices. What that really means is 100% of devices that support Google Play, and Google Play is the mechanism we're using to distribute our apps, and that's the approved way. Um, note that not every Android device supports Google Play, so just be aware of that. And we'll go with that and choose Finish. Once that loads up, let's take a look at our Gradle scripts and notice that uh, we're looking at the Android under the project window. We have the Android filter, and this groups all of the Gradle scripts in one area, and the one we want is the one that says module app. So go ahead and select that file. When we look at this, there are a couple of things we want to pay attention to. Um, notice it says min SDK version. That represents the API level that we just set when we created this project. So this is minimum of 15. Next, there is the compile SDK version, and this is set to 28. This is building against the API level 28, which means that the Android Studio build version is running against 28. Now, the target SDK version indicates the API version the app is designed and tested for. So if the Android platform is higher than that, meaning you're running on a newer device, the platform may enable compatibility to make sure your app continues to work it was designed for. Next, we want to look at the dependencies. And notice these dependencies reference libraries. Um, for example, App Compat, which is our main support library. We have Constraint, which adds constraint layout. We have JUnit for unit testing and the uh, Android test implementation test runner. These other two apply for our unit tests. If you are opening a project and it was running an older version that represented um, older versions of these libraries than what your current version of Android Studio has installed, then you would see this highlighted. And from there, you could right click and update to the latest version. Whenever you're working with new projects or if you're updating an app and you're planning to kind of redo the UI and functionality of the app, making kind of major changes, it's important to update these support libraries to the latest version. Now, I would caution that you don't necessarily have to update to the latest version if you're doing minor updates. Otherwise, you're going to have to redo a lot of testing and validation on your app. On the other hand, the benefits you get from the latest versions of these libraries is better security and better compatibility. So just keep that in mind as you work through uh, especially as you visit old apps. If you make any changes to the Gradle file, so for example, um, if I were to change my target, uh, 
let's say I change my compile SDK version, it will prompt you to sync and you'll want to rebuild that and it will download any additional libraries that are needed. In this case, I don't need to make any updates, so I'll just leave that. Next, let's go to our main activity, uh, the activity underscore main.xml file, and let's change our layout a little bit. We're going to go to the design tab, and we're going to select our hello world text, and let's go to the attributes and change ID. We're going to set this to hello underscore text view. The text style we want to set to bold. Text size we want to set to 100 SP. So the lesson suggests that we should set the text alignment on this text view, but the reality is, is that because we set the API, the minimum SDK, to 15, it's actually not an attribute that's available to us. If you were to change that minimum SDK to 17, then you would see a thing called text alignment that would show up and it would give you those options that you're familiar with when it comes to centering on the uh, text. And so in order to address that, instead, I'm going to reference an attribute that is available to API 15, which is called gravity. If I twirl open the all attributes and then I gently scroll down here um, and find gravity, if I twirl that open, then um, I've got some properties and the one we want is center horizontal. And if I set that to true, then it gives me the same behavior. So I'll go ahead and do that. Next, let's go ahead and uh, we're gonna select and delete that constraint from the bottom. So notice now it's constrained to the top, but at this point um, I need to set a, a top margin so that it's not stuck all the way at the top. If I, with the text view selected and I come over here, I can select this and set it to eight. So now it has a better uh, padding on the top. Next, let's take a button and we're gonna drag this button and add it to the bottom and centered. Let's add some constraints from the left and right and bottom. With the button still selected, let's change the layout width to match constraint. So now it fills the width of the constraints. Next, let's add Change this ID and say color underscore button, press return. And then let's change this text to change color. Let's go to our text layout and notice um, that is prompting us is saying, hey, we're hard coding this string. So let's um, go ahead and change that and extract the string resource and we'll just go with the defaults and click OK. And then for this one, we also want to extract the string resource for the hello world, and we'll just say hello text, and choose OK. In our button, let's add an on-click event. So we're gonna say on-click, and I'll go ahead and press tab, and we're gonna say change color. For that, let's go ahead and create the on-click event handler. And that'll be in our main activity, and we'll click OK. Next, what we're going to do is create a range of colors, and every time we press the button, we're gonna change the button, the color of the text, to a random color. So first, let's go back to our resources folder and twirl that open, and under the values, Notice we have an XML file called colors. Go ahead and double click that. Here we are presented with the colors that represent the theme, which is the colors of the backgrounds and the header and things like that. We want to add a number of colors to represent all the possible choices. Now, 
because I'm lazy, I'm going to copy and paste this from the lesson. So you can do the same. Let's go over to the lesson and we're on task number two for 3.3. And I'm just going to select copy and here I'm going to paste all these colors. Now the cool thing that I like about Android Studio is it gives you the color swatch over here on the left so you know what that color is. Pretty cool. Now that we have our list of colors, let's go back to the main activity, main activity dot Java class and we need to set this up so that we can do a few things. So first we want to reference to our uh, text view. So we're going to say private text view and press tab to import that. And we're going to say um, hello text view. And we can do it however we want and we'll close that off. Next we need to create a color array and for this I'm going to sneaky and I'm just going to come over here copy and paste this so that we don't have any typing mistakes. So I'll go ahead and paste that. Perfect. Next in the on create we need to connect our reference of the text view. So we're going to say m hello text view equals find view by id and then we're going to say r.id dot hello text view. While we're in the on create, let's um, check for any saved state. So if we say if saved instance state is not equal null, then we're going to say m hello text view dot set text color saved instance state dot get int and the key is uh oh oops. The key is color. Now we need to add the on save instance state method, the override method. We've looked at this before. We want to add that to our class so that when the app exits, we're saving that. So here we're going to say at override and we're going to say public void on save instance state which takes a bundle and it's called out state and then we call the super method so we say super dot on save instance state and we say out state then we're going to save the current text color so we're going to say out state dot put int and the key is color and the value is m hello text view dot get current text color. Okay, so now what happens is when the app exits, it saves the current text color, and then when it comes back, we are reloading that. So now all we need to do is update the code within our change color method. First we need to create a random number object by using the random class and so we'll create a variable for that. We'll call it random, press tab to import that and then we'll just call it random equals new random. Oops, close that out. Next we're going to create a, a color name. We're going to say string color name equals m color array and from there we do our array syntax which is the square bracket we say random dot next int and this is going to be a value between 20 within 0 to 20 is our range and from there that returns our color this the the actual bound the 20 means 0 through 19, so it's not going to return the number 20, but it'll return between 0 and 19, which is the index range of our color array. 
Next, we want to get the resource identifier, an integer for the color name from the resources. And we do that by saying int color resource name equals get resources dot get identifier. And then we say color name comma, and then the key that is color and then get application context. I just want that one dot get package name. So when the app is compiled, um, the Android op operating system converts the definitions in the XML file to resources with internal integer IDs. So these are separate IDs from the name and the value. So this each of those ma matches the color string name in the color name array to the color name ID in the XML. After we have the uh, color resource name, we then need to get the integer ID for the actual color from the resource and assign it to a color res variable and use the get theme method to get the theme for the current application. So we're going to say int color res equals get resources dot get color and then it's color resource name and this dot get theme. Now notice the get color method is underlined and it says call requires API level 23. The current minimum is 15. So to solve for this, what we're going to do is check the platform version and use the right version of get color depending on where the app is running. Now the best better way is to use a support library. So here on the color res assignment where we say color res, we're going to uh, use the context compat class. So here uh, we're going to replace get resources with context compat dot get color. And then we reference this and we say color resource name. So context compat provides many of the compatibility methods to address these API differences. The get color method in context compat takes these two arguments, which is the current context, which is this activity, and then the name of the color. So what this does is allows us to reference support libraries instead of trying to do an if then statement where we say, well, if the current uh, API level is this, use this method. If it's an older version of API, then use a different method. Since instead, we're using our support library that allows us to do this with one single line of code. And finally, we go ahead and set the text field to hello text view dot set text color. And we set this to color res. Let's go ahead and run this and see how it goes. From here, we'll go ahead and test this. We'll click change color. Ooh, ah, oh, wow. Pretty cool. Okay, so in this example, what we've done is identified how we can reference the various minimum SDKs to target older versions so that our app will run on older devices. We've looked at one example of how to use the context compat class to reference methods that are compatible across different APIs. And we can take a look at how to work with our Gradle file to make sure our dependency and support libraries are up to date. I hope that was helpful. Please be sure to subscribe and look for the next video. Thanks for watching.